Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Over the next 20 minutes, I'm going to take you on a journey inside a Microsoft Office 365 groups. We're going to discover exactly what they are, how to set them up, and more importantly, a few little secrets in between. So stick with me. Okay, so let's begin. So here I am in my Office 365 or Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And first up, I'm going to go into my admin portal here. Now, in terms of 365 groups, you can create them in a number of places. Um, as an administrator, I can go into the groups area here and I can go into groups and you can create, go ahead and create a group. So what I'm going to do now, this is a fairly new feature. What we have is this Metro line type of setup here. So the idea is it's a little bit easier uh, to create the groups. Now in 365, we currently have four different types of groups. If you're familiar with the old Windows Server and Microsoft Exchange platforms of the, of the years gone by, you'll be familiar with security groups where you can uh, assign permissions to things like OneDrive, SharePoint um, documents, more kind of the applications themselves. Um, <clears throat> of course, if you're using Microsoft Exchange, there are two types of groups. A distribution list, essentially a distribution group, just used for distributing email. Mail enabled security, of course, is just the same as a regular security group. But the idea is that it's uh, you can um, uh, assign uh, security with it as well. Um, the one that we're really looking at and the one that we're really interested in, in fact, it's actually the default type of group is something called Office 365. So the very much the, the name of the game nowadays is collaboration and collaboration begins with 365 and this kind of again goes back to the old days of Microsoft Exchange where we had something called public folders um, so this kind of is like that but it goes much more beyond that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a group and I'm going to call this my uh, I will call this what will I call it I'll call this my London HR group okay so uh, I could put in a little description here. Um, I'll just say uh, HR uh, staff and I'll click on next. So at this point, I can set an owner. So who's going to own the group? This can be a, kind of any members of staff. Um, and you'll notice here that it's going to, it's requesting that it integrates it with Teams. I'll mention that uh, in a second. So first up, I'm currently logged on as a user called Megan. So I'm going to just log, uh, use Megan as the current owner of this uh, particular group. Now, um, in here, the, this is where, of course, it's interactive, it's collaborative. At the moment, I can uh, assign this group a name. Now, in the past, it was whoever created the group. You couldn't really change it. Now it's much more uh, collaborative um, and much more interesting, by the way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to uh, Put in an email address. Again, I'll just call it my London HR uh, group. I'll just call it London HR, actually. Now, um, in terms of privacy, you can either have a public, um, so anyone can see it, that's potentially including guests, uh, or private, so only members can actually see this particular group. Um, I'm going to leave this as public at the moment. And it says, do you want to uh, add a Microsoft team to this group? Now, that's an important thing to appreciate that Microsoft Teams, when you create a Microsoft team, you also create an Office 365 group. When you create an Office 365 group, you have the option not to create an Office 365 team. Um, but don't worry about that. You can come back to that if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and just click next. I get a nice little review. And again, I'm going to go ahead now and create that group. And you can see the lights have all gone green here. Now, at this moment, I can uh, create another group. What do I want to do? For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to click on uh, close here. OK, so as we can see, the London HR group has come in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that group. Now, first up, you can see here, it's telling me that this is an Office 365 group. 
This is another change that's recently taken place. So there's much more information here. Um, I, you can see there it's an assigned group. So it's assigned with members of uh, users. It's a public group and also the date and time it was created. Um, and again, you can customize those columns as well. So you can see we've got a little filter at the top here. You can, you can view uh, exactly how you want to, to, to view those. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just scroll back along there. Let's have a look at this. Um, so the first thing you might want to do is you might want to add some members to your group. So again, I'm now going to kick on mem uh, click on members. And you can, you can see I can manage the owners to the group. I can also, this is where I can add in members as well. Okay, so I'm going to add some members to the group. So I'm going to click on add and just wait a moment for it to populate. OK, so um, I'm going to bring in Alan. Um, I'm going to bring in Adele. Um, I'm going to bring in Bob. Beverly. bring in okay and I'm going to bring in Christy as well oh let's give it a second to think about it okay uh, sorry yeah Cameron's not got a license that's why okay fantastic okay so you can see I've uh, I've added in those users and again you can uh, add in more as well if you want to um, so nice and easy um, I'm going to click on uh, save that okay the membership was added and you can see that those users have now been added in so if I click close so the next thing so you can see I've now added in my users my owner is um, uh, Megan um, if I click into settings now a couple of things here um, allow external senders to e email this group. So if you're using guests, if you're allowing guests access, um, again, you might obviously want them to be able to email the group. It could be customers, it could be suppliers, uh, something like that. Um, send copies of group conversations. Again, you can choose that. Uh, and again, you can change uh, whether it's private or public. Now, I did mention that I created this group without creating a Microsoft team. So please note that once you do this, however, it's an irreversible action. You can't go back. So it's a one way process. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a team. Uh, you can see it says, yeah, you need to you can manage this in the Microsoft Teams admin center. Fine. Um, so I'm going to click on that. And again, back to general. So it tells me when this group was created. Uh, looks good. Um, yeah, this this all looks good now, uh, and I'm I'm happy with the way uh, that is. Okay. Now look what's happened here. You can see that now it's a, a Microsoft team. So and if I flip over into the Microsoft Teams tab, and if I just go ahead and reload this page you can see that we now have a London HR group, okay? So the London HR group, um, by default, of course, um, every team uh, in Microsoft Teams get a, a general channel, but again, you can manage members, you can manage content and so on there. Again, that's maybe something I'll, I'll possibly do in a future video. Um, so what do you get um, as your uh, Microsoft uh, team? Um, sorry, as your Microsoft group. So as I said, um, that's the first place that you create that. Now, if I flip over into my email, um, again, I'm just going to just refresh this page uh, just so we can see everything. And when I scroll down, you can see that we have groups. And it, as I as I can see, you can see that we also have a number of different groups. Now, uh, I've not put, put anything in my group yet, but you can see that I've got a sales and marketing group, for example. So what do I get in the group? Well, as you can see, I get a collaborative mailbox. So I get a shared mailbox between my 
uh, team of users. Um, other things that we get, you also can, you get a OneDrive. So you get a OneDrive for business, a shared. You also get a shared calendar experience, a notebook, a planner, and you also get a, a SharePoint uh, team site as well. So if I just click onto that, you'll see that you get this very nice um, sales and marketing uh, team site. And this is a, a demo one that I, I set up earlier. But the thing is here, it's so collaborative. Um, so it's not just a case of a Microsoft team. You also get an, a website. You also get a planner. You get the calendar. M really, really collaborative. Much more than that, you can also view it in Microsoft Outlook as well. Um, Andy, are there any gotchas? Yes, there are a gotchas. Well, first of all, who can create groups? By default, anyone can. So be very, very careful. Any user can come into groups here and they can go ahead and create a new group. Uh, you can also do this. So for example, if I, uh, in, if I had my, my own uh, Outlook client as well, I would also be able to create groups there. So there's a, there's a few things that you can do about that to kind of ease that, by the way. So let me just uh, close these down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the 365 Admin Center. Again, I'm going to go back into Groups. Now, just a, a, a little note here. If you delete a group, you delete all of its content. So all of that group would go into the deleted group items, and it will stay there for 30 days, and you can bring that back. It doesn't delete users, okay? So it doesn't delete any kind of users. Um, so you can, you can easily bring that content back if you want to. Can I manage groups a little bit better? Well, there's a few places where you can manage groups. So I can go uh, just expand this menu here. If I go into settings and if I go into settings here. So in settings, if I scroll down, um, there are a number of, this is all your different settings here for, um, you know, various applications and things. And we've got one here for Office 365 groups. So by default, it says let group members outside your organization access the content. So if you're allowing guest access, um, then uh, again, that's a, a video that I'm going to follow up on in the future. Then this is where that will appear. Um, also, let group owners add people outside your organization. Um, so again, if you've uh, assigned Peter to be a group owner, then he can also add people in uh, as well if you want to. All right. So that is that. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I also, as well as the admin center, a, an excellent place to manage groups is if you go in through Azure Active Directory. Now, bearing in mind that Azure Active Directory, Office 365, Microsoft 365, whatever you want to call it, it's the same directory service. Okay. Uh, so with that in mind, if I go into uh, the Azure Active Directory and into groups here, you can see exactly the same groups. So if I scroll down, there's my London HR team. Uh, on my London HR group, you can see it's in the sign, it's in the cloud, tells me how many users are in it, how many members, owners, um, and so on. Okay, so um, that's, that's the first thing there. So going back to this, there's some very interesting settings here on the left-hand side. So if I go into the general tab here, you can see that, first of all, self-service group management. Owners can manage group membership requests. So there's two ways that you can do group membership. It can be assigned or people can request access to the group. So do you want that? Yes or no? Restrict access to the groups uh, in the access panel. So again, you might want to restrict it or not. Security groups. Users can create security groups in the portals. Owners can assign members as group owners. So do you want owners to assign other group members as owners? Um, so that can be all group owners or only selected ones or none. If you choose none, only administrators can do this. So just be aware of that. Very important, Office 365 groups, 
users can create Office 365 groups in the portals. So yes or no. So if you don't want your users creating 365 groups, this is a place where you can stop them. That's really important, by the way. Owners can assign members in the admin portals. Again, it's up to yourself. So there are some really good options here. Now, we also have a special group here called Directory Wide. This, this is everyone. This is like an everyone group in the old days that we used to have. Um, again, this is kind of PowerShell. You would go in and do this through PowerShell as well. A couple of really excellent features for groups here in 365 and Azure is the expiry feature. So one of the things about Office 365 is assuming that anyone can go ahead and create these groups. Can you imagine it? It would potentially quickly get out of control. And there's another issue as well. <clears throat> what if the group, you know, a year down the line has only got a few documents in it, maybe it was for a project, it's not used, not been used for 18 months. Do you do we really need that group? Do you otherwise it's going to just completely load everything up with groups? So one of the th clever things that we have here is that you can also set a group lifetime. So you can set a group lifetime of a of a year. You can put in a contact address like an admin or or something like that. Um, enable expiry for these Office 365 groups. So you can specify which groups or all groups if you want to. Now, the, the benefit of that is that um, if you do that, um, obviously the group will expire in a year. But if it's a heavily used group, so if there's a lot of traffic going through that group, it doesn't expire it. So don't panic. Okay. Um, one of the cool feature that I want to show you also is a naming policy. So we have something called the group naming policy. And if I flip back into the admin center and just open up, um, let's say groups again, um, you, if I just go into yeah, Office 365 groups, You'll see that some of these groups here, if I just scroll down, so SG Executive, SG Engineering, for example. So this is telling me that you can potentially add a, a prefix or a suffix to the group. So Lon um, London HR Sales, um, New York HR Sales, and so on. So you can you can have your own little naming parameters, that especially if you've got an awful lot of groups. It really makes it uh, easy to understand. So you can add a prefix or a suffix here. Now, the, um, the other thing that I was going to mention, just flip back a screen there. The other thing um, in the naming policy tab is that you can also have blocked words. So there's specific words that you don't think there are really, I don't, I'm not meaning rude words, but you know, blocked words that you think that uh, are inappropriate. You can, you can put that there. Please note you've got a 5,000 word limit maximum. Now you can add them individually or you can add them through a CSV file, a comma separated value file. Okay. How um, groups are all managed through, you can view the audit logs, who's creating them, who's managing them. Um, and you can also do access reviews as well. So if you've got any users who have got the roles uh, or admin roles, or you're using um, things like um, group managers and things like that, then you can, you can review that. Do they still need those permissions and so on? So there you have it, Microsoft Office 365 Groups not only a way of organizing your users, but fantastic for collaboration as well. I really hope you've enjoyed this little session and come back and see me again. I'm Andy Malone. Thank you very much.